the playstyle of Ignite Fireball is just so smooth for mapping. It's really great. Throw out a fireball, it obliterates everything on the screen that's within Ignite Proliferation range. Such a smooth playstyle, really enjoyable to play. Would seriously recommend this build as such an enjoyable build. It's just so fast and satisfying, especially for how tanky it is at the moment. Especially if you can pick up a Val Fireball for things such as Legions. It's even quite nice for like Breaches and stuff like that. Just such a great playstyle. Firstly, again, I would like to say thank you for the support on the series. I'd really enjoy to continue the series, so if you'd like to continue watching, comments, likes, and subscriptions are massively appreciated and motivating. Thank you. I'd say the SSF journey so far is going pretty well. I've only done about, you know, six or so maps at the moment. I found two more upgrades to equip. This random five link dropped with perfect colors, and after using one alchemy on it, it became this rare, which looks like a solid upgrade for us. I also identified this other shield and crafted life on it, which after equipping both of these upgrades, we have a really nice defensive increase of around 300 life, 500 armor, and an extra 150-ish energy shield. This also helps us with our stat requirements a decent amount, as the shield has 40 strength. Still, a better helmet is probably priority number one at the moment, along with nicer rings and a belt. So let's take a look at our atlas passives and plans for our passives before we get started mapping. Immediately, the only points we have are in the guaranteed one essence here, and just a few in these ones that we're going to be heading up. I think our first priority is going to be for shaping the mountains and shaping the skies to try and improve our map sustain and map drops. Also, we're going to be going for higher tier maps, of course. We want to be able to get the experience, the better drops. We just want the more progression into the endgame that we can get. Aside from that, we might want to pick up the Kirak passives up here to try and, again, help with map sustain. Help with filling out our atlas, getting more acid points that we need. We're going to be wanting to pick up some of these other essence nodes. Especially the one up here, Essences for any of your maps are a tier higher, really strong node. This one down here is nice as well, just increases the amount of Essences you get quite dramatically. Aside from that, because it's SSF, anything that with a crafting lead mechanic is quite strong. So of course Essences, uh, Bestiary is decent, Harvest especially is fantastic. I don't really like Harvest as a mechanic, but it is just so strong that we're probably going to have to spec into it and try and use it to help our gear progression go along. Aside from that, I think we want to go for this... Well, normally I'd like to go for the Searing Exarch, because the Searing Exarch is the more consistent currency choice. Meanwhile, the Eater of Worlds is you don't get as much currency, but every now and then you'll get the Divine Altars, and they are just insane currency in Trade League. Obviously, in SSF it's a bit different, but... The only thing is, I am actually not sure about the Searing Arc Implicits that you can get. If you can get anything that is related to Fire, would be extra beneficial. I do believe the mobs from Searing Exarch actually have... A chance of getting increased fire resistance which is a little bit of a pain for us it'll make them a bit tankier meanwhile the eater of wards has i believe no chance of getting increased fire resistance as like a just a natural mod that they can get so we'll probably decide further on but my first plans are probably to go for the searing exarch if that's a possible plan but for now the plan as i said shaping the mountains shaping the skies probably when i'm gonna come and pick up crystal lattice probably going to pick the kirak stuff up from here and then probably into this like little ring up here these nodes here are quite powerful the ones inside are obviously even better this is very strong amplified energies definitely want to get that soon if possible but it's going to take a little while to path through all of this anyway those are the current plans as uh, as we go on i'll probably develop the idea further and we can see what we end up going for really but for now yeah that's the plan so now we're going to be testing to see if Sanctum feels any better with a bit of extra move speed and hopefully a bit of increased damage since I last did it. I'm not going to lie, the last time I was doing Sanctums it didn't really feel very good, but I think mostly that was due to having zero movement speed on my boots, so I was just getting hit way too much because I couldn't dodge anything. My damage also feels low. This definitely feels like a league mechanic that rewards speed and high damage builds maybe it's a ripping mechanic i'm not really sure to be honest i haven't done too much because i was skipping it while leveling it didn't really seem to be particularly rewarding while leveling to me so i didn't think it was really worth the time but so far my thoughts are that the resolve mechanic punishes tanky slower builds considerably more than squishy builds but maybe it's just very rippy for squishy builds squishy fast builds and because i'm not squishy i'm not dying to it it's just that i'm losing through resolve two chaos three orbs four stack decks honestly let's just take two chaos right now it's probably the best one. Oh, oh i've earned the victorious gloves the appearance of this glove improves it as you complete 12 20 and 29 challenges that's actually really interesting that's much better than the old how the old system used to work Gain 200 Inspiration, lose 200 Resolve. I have no idea what Inspiration is, but 200 Resolve will basically just end the run on itself. 
And this also doesn't seem very great. So I think I'm going to try this and see what this is like. Oh, you can actually take multiple, huh? What does this do then? Oh, this is loot. Seven alchemy on completing the sanctum. Four chromatics right now. Uh, if I'm being completely honest, I haven't actually completed a sanctum yet. I was just too slow. One of the afflictions I got was like minus 60% move speed, which you literally just get hit by everything. You can't dodge it. It's just terrible. Gain 250 inspiration at the start of each floor. Still no idea what inspiration is, so that's something else to figure out. Traps impact 100% increase resolve. Room types are unknown. Okay, lose all coins on floor completion. Once still more damage guards are accompanied by a gargoyle. Okay, not a big deal. So let's buy this boon and just 50 extra resolve. I guess. Let's try to buy this and try and see what inspiration is. Let's go for that and try and figure out what inspiration is. Now it's actually time for the boss. So this is a map level boss, but it's only like a tier one. So we'll see how this goes. Damage is not looking amazing. Uh, actually, to be honest, it's not too bad. I was actually... Noon Relic. Not gonna lie, the panic set in when this was white and red. I thought we got something really nice, but no. Let's see what this is. Oh, gain coins at the start of each sanctum. Okay. <laughs> cool, I guess. Okay, well, that inspiration appears here, 319. Does this mean it's like a, like, energy shield for... Yeah, it took inspiration hitting us there instead of resolve. So I guess it's kind of like energy shield for... Well, actually, I don't know if it regens or anything. So I guess it's not really like energy shield. It's just like a temporary shield, I guess. Not entirely sure. I'll try and figure it out. My impressions now at this point aren't as positive of... Sanctum as they were at the very beginning, mainly because of resolve and just because it feels like it takes so long to get through. It does feel quite rewarding, I will say. If I was in Trade League, I'd probably be, I mean, even in SSF, it's like, it's nice. It's just at the moment, I can't really utilize the currency as well in SSF. Of course, in Trade League, I can just trade it for whatever I want, but soon I'll start probably using some currency when I figure out what I really want to do with it. But for now, we don't have the bases or anything to actually use anything on anything useful, really. Another thing I don't really enjoy. Oh, 40% reduced movement speed. So this was 60 last time I got it, so I'm not sure if it's got nerfed now or what, but still, this is rough. Like, I don't know how I'm supposed to... Uh, it's not as bad at 40%, but it is bad still. As soon as my quicksilver wears off, you can see I'm moving like a bloody slug. Can hardly move. Even though you get one sanctum room per map you do, or like, not even map, just instance, but obviously in game just map's the only relevant one it just feels like a side league mechanic it doesn't really feel like a big important thing that's in every single map and that's the thing that you like want to be focusing on because it's brand new that's like the main disappointing part i feel of oh relic altar slot unlocked okay so i guess that boss was something important it's disappointing because it does seem like it, a pretty decent league mechanic there's just a few things that i feel hold it back i don't feel like you get enough of it and i feel like it just takes too long to progress through the rooms, but maybe I'm in the minority with that. And also, I don't think Resolve seems like the greatest mechanic, but I could be in the minority. I have, must admit, I haven't really looked at people's thoughts on Sanctum at all. I haven't really uh, actually looked at anything regarding PoE in a while, to be honest, besides from like, I looked at PoE Ninja a little bit just to see what was meta and try and avoid playing what's meta, to be honest. Although, Honestly, a lot of the meta skills recently have just seemed so dull to me. Like, I think Poison Seismic Trap is, like, pretty meta at the moment, which, I don't know, that just doesn't sound very fun to me at all, to be honest. But the plus side now is I feel like PoE's core game is actually so good now anyway that you don't even... Even if the league is underwhelming, which... To me it is. I prefer stuff that you do inside the actual map itself and just adds monsters and loot. I do like player agency, which of course, there's quite a lot of player agency in Sanctum, so I'm glad for that. I just feel unfortunately the mechanic just isn't as prevalent as I'd like it to be. But maybe it'll change when I've unlocked more relic slots and I get more like access to buffs and things like that. But I can't imagine it ever changes the amount of rooms that you actually get to save. Because I don't want a one one room of a sanctum every map. I want to just do like, you know, an entire sanctum in a row or at least an entire floor most of the time. And finally we get Divine Judgment. Hopefully that's a big damage increase and we can see how big of a damage increase that is. This would be a really solid shield if it didn't have a life roll or if that life roll was significantly higher. The armor scaling would be nice, double resistance, strength, really, just really good for the build, but unfortunately... Oh. 
Hey, that's actually pretty good. Plus, I can craft a... I can craft one resist on there or something. One suffix. I might actually take that. That might actually be an upgrade. Like, this is pretty terrible at the moment. I'm not sure if we need the dexterity or not, though. Well, fourth death. Times like that where I really wish I had Val Fireball. Just having that extra undemand AoE damage would really just nullify that problem, I feel. Oh well, not a big deal. We're only level 77, so the bit loss of XP isn't that big. Uh, honestly, I'm pretty surprised that we are dying, though, in a tier 3 map with just poison on hit. Although, I suppose poison is quite bad at the moment because chaos resistance is just so low. Uh, well, okay, and that's a good identification. I'm not going to have enough decks to use it, though, unfortunately, which is really unfortunate. That's a significantly better helmet than the one I do have at the moment. I would be uncapped fire resistance, but I'm sure I could find some way to make that work. Yeah, but I'm going to need 40 extra decks, and I lose dexterity from there as well, so it's actually 56 decks I need. I'm not sure if I can actually get 56 decks. I mean, I definitely can, but I don't think it's worth the investment of skill points that it would need. I think now, actually, I might pick up the increased effect of cruelty. Damage over time mastery. Should be a nice little damage increase. Not a huge amount, but a little bit. I think now on the passive tree, actually, I'm not entirely sure what to go for. We should probably pick up elemental overload now, so that's another three levels. I would honestly like to improve... I would honestly like to improve defenses now, but I'm not entirely sure how I can really do that at this point on the tree. The, I'm not needing any more life, really. My life pool is good enough. I just need other layers of resistances. Block would be nice, but most of the shield block up here is just spell block, which, while that's decent, at the moment I feel like attacks are the big issue. But I can get easy access to a lot of attack block if I do actually end up finding a staff that's any good. See that there? One of the nicest parts about Ignite is just it going straight through proximity shields because of the Ignite proliferation. Oh my god. Well, okay then. <laughs> that is huge. Wow. That is really amazing. Okay, so now we can actually spec into all these staff block defensive nodes, and this will be an incredible damage increase. Really incredible. I saw the Lathi unique drop and I was like, well, Lathi, Lathi, I don't know how you pronounce that, but either way, I saw that and I was like, this could actually be it. Maybe it has to be it. I don't know if there's actually any other unique staffs on this base. I'm gonna have to put this into POB and see how much of a damage increase it is. The only problem is we will take a defense hit because our resistances, yeah, they'll be slightly not capped because this gives 12 all res. Plus we'll take strength hit. Do we have enough? Okay, we still have enough strength to use it. It's only 113 strength actually, and we have 242. We have so much strength actually. Might have too much to be honest. This is gonna be a crazy damage increase. At the moment, Gear Pryo now then? This is a fine weapon and will carry us quite far into the end game. So we want definitely a better helmet, 100%. <laughs> Much better helmet. Preferably an armor base for our determination scaling. Better rings. Ideally I'd like to get some more chaos resistance and also higher life and some decks if possible. Belt is also quite lackluster. We can get significantly higher life from this and also better resistances. Boots are kind of okay for now. No life, which would be nice to get, but, you know, we make do with what we have. Also, these gloves are pretty terrible. It's mainly just for, for these stats, these gloves. But we don't need 20 strength, but we will need the 40 dexterity. So I'll probably have to use a uh, some weird gloves to be able to get enough dex to actually use some of our things. Because we do have quite a lot of green gems that do take quite a bit of dex. I don't have that many uniques, but I do have one of the best for my build. I actually want to check this in POB before I before I just equip this. Let me have a look, quick look at the resistances. Yeah, so we need 20 fire res, 20 lightning res to just be like baseline capped. Oh uh, yeah, our weapon also had fire and lightning resistance, right? So this is our current Ignite DPS, 101k. This is uh, just on standard mobs. If you put this on Uber Pinnacle, it will drop. Yeah, look at that, 18,000 DPS. So as you can see, our damage is very low at the moment. But then we swap this out for a Searing Touch. And that's like a 50% damage increase. That is quite significant. Plus it also un allows us to unlock the block nodes as I was talking about, which is also quite a significant DPS increase. Uh, 
defense increase, sorry. The only thing now is we've got to try and figure out if we want to drop something to spec into... And my PB is also so out of date, this is actually 3.17. So we also do lose, like, some armor, 100 ES, and 200 life to equip this. But I think the damage increase will be worth it. I'm also going to have to try and sort out the sockets. And of course our resistances aren't capped. 20% fire and 20% lightning we need. I don't know how we're really going to be able to get that. Aside from just getting gear upgrades, which is easier said than done. Although a lot of these items are really terrible. Like, this helmet is so bad. I should be able to find something better than this soon, hopefully. I think for now we can't... I think for now we just stick with our lower DPS setup. And then once I've got the resistances sorted, then we can swap over to the Searing Touch. So we've made some pretty big changes to the build, actually. We're now using the Searing Touch. I moved our gem set up into our gloves. These are still the same gloves, it's just very different colours, so we could actually fit our flammability hex touch with conviction support set up in there we got this brand new helmet this was just from i believe it was from an essence uh greed essence so the life was guaranteed everything else is just luck really crafted decks it's okay it's nothing amazing but now we're sitting at almost 4800 life 1300 es capped resistance is only minus 32 chaos resistance obviously we'd like to get that higher we'll try 30% attack block and 12% spell block with our staff at the moment. Also got this new belt. Bit of crafted lightning, chaos res. Basically just a bunch of life, tiny bit of armor. Let's actually quick check about armor. 5,100. Bit low, but it's okay for now. Those are the main gear changes. Aside from that, it was going to be hard to cap the resistances for now. So I've actually disabled vitality and we're just using determination and purity of elements. Purity of Elements is not something that I'd like to be running, but it also helps solve another problem, which is elemental ailments at the moment. In very, very low tier maps, it's not really an issue if you don't have any elemental ailment immunity, because a lot of the time the mobs just don't apply any ailments, so it's not really that big of a deal. But I'm trying to push up to like tier 5s, maybe a little bit into yellow maps at the moment, we're only level 81. We're probably going to be sitting on the elemental ailment immunity from Purity of Elements for quite a while to be honest because it's going to take a while to sort that out from gear can of course get flask affixes with the important ones like this one immunity to freeze and chill the only problem with this our mana pool is quite low our fireball's got an 81 mana cost our flame has got a 40 can't really be spamming fireball too much would like to be able to get a an enduring mana flask but for now i don't from the skill tree started picking up our staff nodes we got a bit of staff block here we've got whirling barrier just a bit more block the power charges don't really make much of a difference at all to us at the moment after that we're probably going to be going into enigmatic defense up here again a bit more block the spell damage isn't very useful so these points don't feel great to pick up but a lot of these points are just temporary until we get cluster jewels to be able to support these we also should come and pick up elemental overload probably but not right now i'm also pretty sure that this effect of cruelty is actually completely useless to us i don't think it actually i'm not entirely sure how it works but it doesn't the buff i'm getting from cruelty is still 40 percent. it's not 40 percent plus you know 30 percent of 40 percent, so an extra 12 percent. i think this might just make it easier to get to the cap of cruelty rather than actually increasing the maximum damage buff of cruelty so this isn't very useful so i'll probably swap that out at some point that's another point basically this tree just isn't very efficient right now we're probably well, we're almost certainly weren't going to want to use two cluster jaw setups in the things here for now. But of course, just don't have that yet. That's something much later on. Says the Seth, it's really going to take a while to get any cluster jaws that are even remotely usable. So yeah, that's how it is for the build right now. Damage is quite significantly better than it was. Survivability is hopefully improving alongside that of course higher health pool higher es pool slightly higher armor ailment immunity significantly less regen but i'm hoping just for now flasks will be okay to sustain us okay anyway i think that's it for this video next video we'll be pushing hopefully into yellow maps getting more of our atlas filled out progressing probably nearly to level 90 but we'll see how it goes. If you've been enjoying the series so far, I'd appreciate any comments, likes, feedbacks, subscriptions, anything like that. If you're playing PoE, I'd love to hear I'd love to hear how your league is going in the comments. If you're not playing PoE, what games are you playing? That would also be quite interesting. All right. Anyway, thank you guys. Good luck.